Joining us now, she's the assistant coach at Iowa. He helps uh, handle the pitching staff for an improved Iowa Hawkeyes team after having a great, good season. Former Michigan and Maryland player. I speak of Mandy Gardner. Joining us for the first time here on In the Circle. How you doing? Good. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited uh, to share a little bit inside of uh, our pitching staff and just our program and kind of the improvements we've seen. Well, let's talk about the season. How would you describe the season? It's your first season on the staff, obviously with you and Brian on the uh, joining Coach Gillespie staff. Uh, you've already got more wins this season than Iowa had all of last season. And, you know, certainly right in the mix, top half of the Big Ten Conference and trying to chase down some postseason aspirations. What, how would you describe the season to this point? I think it's just been just really great. Um, a lot of fun. You know, Brian and I both bring – new techniques um, and just a lot of energy. And I feel like we both do a really good job at building those relationships with our student athletes and giving them the confidence uh, to go out there and just play their best. So I think that's been a big key factor in, in our success is, is getting them prepared um, and just make sure that they feel as confident as they can, can be going out there. So. What's it been like for you to be back in the big tennis? We'll talk about it a little bit. You've, You've got a history in the Big Ten, uh, so I'm curious what's it been like being back as a coach? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been so fun. I think, you know, the Big Ten is one of the, obviously, the most, I think, I'm biased, but I think it's the most prestigious softball conference. I mean, the history within the Big Ten is just, I mean, it's just, it goes back so far. And obviously, with Michigan, playing at Michigan, and they kind of ruled the Big Ten for a long time, having the parity now of other teams stepping up and 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 rising to the top is, has been really cool. But yeah, I mean, it's it's such a a, a strong comp conference with strong coaching staffs that have been together for a long time. Um, so I'm just really excited to be a part of such the tradition and the history of the Big Ten now coaching. Um, you know, after playing in it, so it's been fun. Every weekend is competitive you know you can't write anybody off um especially this year and i think it, it's just it's just a testament to the to the to the programs and across the whole conference of getting better and bringing coaching staffs in that are making each team better and that just pushes the whole conference and rises the conference up to the to the top so that's really cool let's talk about the pitchy staff you obviously have you have a 2.2 .2 uh, ADRA as we talk, uh, top 50 in the country in ERA, massive improvement. One of the mo most improved pitching staffs in the country compared to last year when this, when the pitching staff averaged over a five, what, what has been working this year for this young pitching group staff, partly experience, I would imagine, but what's it been like working with these pitchers? I think the biggest thing for, for them was to have that confidence, especially, you know, not performing as well as they might have liked last year. Um, you know, coming in and building those relationships on an individual level has been, you know, really great. I try to make them, you know, obviously the best softball players I can make them, but also the best people and really just try to bring out their strengths as much as as much as I can. But, you know, from day one, they've bought into everything that I've said. And, you know, that doesn't happen um, unless you have those relationships. So the buy-in has been huge. You know, they trust me. They trust my pitch calling, which is great. We have a very open line of communication. Um, and I think too, from a, from a pitch calling standpoint, I, I differ from a lot of pitching coaches just because I have a more of an offensive, uh, kind of viewpoint being mostly a hitter, um, growing up and, and playing in college. So I kind of pitch call more so from an offensive standpoint than, kind of a pitching standpoint. So I think that kind of helps us, um, sets us up nicely, different sequences, but they've bought in from day one. I've had them do some crazy drills that I have in my back pocket. And, um, you know, they just go just head on with everything that I, that I give them. And so I've been very grateful, um, to them obviously for, for that. And, um, you know, they, they work hard. They, didn't want to be last again um, from a staff standpoint, like they were last year. So, you know, we do crazy circuits. Um, I push them to their physical limits, their pitching limits, um, and then just also managing them. I don't overthrow them by any means. I let them kind of listen to their bodies. Like I said, we have a very open line of communication, what they need. 
um, for that specific day. So it's just been really, it's just been really fun. Honestly. Um, I, they've blown me away. Um, I obviously coming in, I wanted to improve them, but they have really just blown me away. And each one of them, I mean, we have nine on staff, which is a lot. Um, and each one of them just, you know, they come up, show up every day at practice and whatever's on the game plan, whatever's in their bullpen, they put their nose down and get to it and work hard. And it's just cool to see them, you know, reap the benefits of all their hard work that they've put in. You mentioned the amount of arms you have. How did you evaluate which ones can contribute right away? Which ones maybe need a little more time before they can contribute in a big way? Because that's a lot of arms to manage. How do you manage so many arms? Yeah, so we're really lucky. We have a good staff of managers that help catch bullpens, which helps a lot from just that aspect of not wearing our catchers out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I my bullpens are very elaborate, very detailed. Um, I track every single one in a book. Um, so kind of seeing how they're doing in their bullpens, we throw live pretty frequently, how they're throwing live, we evaluate in that as well. Um, and, you know, obviously Bree, our fifth year senior, she has that five years of experience. So that's kind of, kind of led her to have a little bit more success and a little bit more innings, but she's also just gone out there and, um, you know, flat out performed in our, in our bullpens, from all year, um, from when she throws live to our hitters, obviously in the games, she's having an outstanding year. So I think it's a, it's a big equation, um, obviously with so many, but we track a lot and, um, I'm big on matchups as well. You know, who's going to be a best matchup, especially for preseason when it's just one single game against the team, you know, do they hit drop balls? Well, do they hit changeups rise kind of thing? So we kind of evaluate there as well. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been fun. I've, I think I've done a pretty good job actually managing nine. When I first found out there was nine, I was kind of like, okay, here we go. Like I've only done five. So, um, but it's been fun and they're all so different and they all have different personalities and different strengths and different weaknesses. So they definitely keep me on my toes. I think they've made me a better pitching coach. Um, you know, every single one of them, which is really cool. Well, and you mentioned Brianna Vasquez, obviously your ace, it's having a great year. I think it should be definitely a strong consideration for all conference performers. Her and Danielle Williams probably been the two best pitchers in the Big Ten to this point. What has clicked for her, and as you mentioned, her fifth year, is it that senior, hey, this is my last go around? What what have you seen why, with her is really pitching her best uh, of her career? Yeah, so when I first got here, um, you know, I always have a soft spot for seniors, obviously, but especially a fifth year who hasn't necessarily had, you know, maybe the career – she's wanted, you know, her freshman year, she had a lot of success and then it kind of was an up and down, um, roller coaster ride for her. And I, you know, I kind of sat her down and was like, what do you want from this year? You know, and I'll, I'll do whatever I can do to make sure that's what happens. And you leave here feeling so fulfilled with, you know, how you performed and, you know, her biggest thing I think was her confidence and having a coaching staff, a pitching coach that, day in and day out, whether she did well, didn't do well, is going to run her back out there and, you know, let her work. And I think with her just building that up, um, she read two books that I recommended um, that she absolutely loved. And she said that it really changed her mindset just from not even from a softball standpoint, just from a, from a life standpoint. So I think that was big. And, you know, we added long toss every day to her just to get her feeling, feeling good, feeling loose. Cause that's when she pitches the best. Um, we revamped a couple of her pitches. Uh, we re kind of revamped her change up, which has been really good this year for her. Um, we brought in her back door, which she hadn't had since her freshman year. So we kind of revamped a little bit, um, gave her some new grips on, she has all the same grips for all of her pitches now, so she can't get tipped. That was a big thing for her last year. Her change up was getting picked left and right, and it made her really frustrated. So she hasn't been picked this year, which is good. She's every time she comes out, she's like, I wasn't picked again, um, which is good. But just making sure that she knows that even on her worst day, she's still having unbelievable games. And, you know, she has a defense behind her. And I mean, it, it's just a testament to her that she's, like I said, she comes out and works her absolute tail off. I mean, her, her pitch count is way high. I mean, she's probably our strongest endurance pitcher right now. Um, and we kind of set that, you know, preseason, she was lights out in the, in January. So I kind of started prepping her, um, 
to have those high pitch counts, you know, so in, in case she did need to throw three, four games preseason, if she absolutely needed to, but um, yeah, with her, it's just, it's just when she feels good, she plays good. So just looking at the positives um, always with her, she's tough on herself. So just making sure she's uplifted always. And I mean, I, I couldn't, I'm so happy for her that she's having such a great year and I hope that she finishes obviously um, continuing to have a good year. So, and she stayed healthy. Her arm, her arm health has been great. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm really proud of her. So she's been fantastic. And then you've had the youngster Jalen Adams who uh, has pitched well for you. I think deserves a better win loss record, quite honest, because she's yeah. pitched really well, won some big games. Uh, for you this season just talk and then you got Denali Lecker who has kind of become like that closer for you uh I mean she's a tremendous two-way player offensive player started a lot of games but you've used her more as a closer so just talk about those two arms in particular and their and, and their their kind of growth one being a youngster and the other one in a role there at closing games out yeah Jalen came in with man her hair on fire she was ready to 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 come in and throw, which, which was awesome. And, um, you know, she, she really challenges me a lot just in the, in the fact of asking a lot of questions and she wants to know a lot of information, which is great. Um, and so she, you know, she makes me a better coach every day, hundred percent, but she also wants the ball. I mean, I've never had a, a freshman so hungry to be out there against the UCLA's and the Texas's. I mean, she's like, give me the ball. I want it. I want to like, you know, just, throw it inside and, and make a miss hit it. And, and she just has such a great attitude. It's really refreshing. And, you know, her parents are coaches, which I think helps from a coachability standpoint. She's great. Um, but also that tough mentality of I'm going to be the best. I'm going to go out and give it my all every single time, but yeah, she's, she's her win loss record. Yeah, I would agree. I think she does deserve a little bit more, but she has gone against some really tough teams and held some teams to some really minimally hits. And if sometimes the box store doesn't always dictate what she actually did in a game, she has given up more bloop singles than I have ever seen. Honestly, any other pitcher given up. I mean, most of her hits are little bloop dinky dunk, you know, just little duck farts overheads and she jams them. She gets them off the end of her bat and um, she has just come in and, and really been a, a bright spot, um, you know, kind of like a game two starter for us, which has been, which has been really great to have. And, um, you know, she, like I said, she fights every single day, which is, which is really cool. And then, um, yeah, Denali, Denali and I are, are, are really close just because I was a drop ball pitcher. So we can't, I came in and she was like, this is so awesome to have someone that understands, you know, what I go through with not trying to throw a rise ball and just not going up. So, um, her and I, you know, clicked right off the bat and we gave her a change up this year, which has been deadly. I have seen some kids swing at balls and dirt over and over and over and over. And she's like, this is kind of fun. And she never thought she would be kind of a change up pitcher, but that's kind of what we've been throwing a lot of the time. And she just gets them to swing and miss and swing and miss and swing and miss. And then all of a sudden she throws a 67 mile per hour drop ball inside and they can't catch up with it. So it's been really fun um, with her, but yeah, I mean, she's such a great compliment to Bree and to Jalen with them being more up movement, you know, her having that, that hard down and then the change up. And then she also has an off speed that we throw. I mean, she has legit three speeds. I think it's just hard for teams to adjust, especially after seeing Bree and Jalen. Um, so that's just, it's just been nice. You know, I, I know she probably wants some more starts maybe, but I know she is also loving having a lot of success um, kind of in that closing role. Um, I think she's up to seven saves now, which is second in the country. Um, and before this year, she didn't even know really what a save was. So it's been kind of fun <laughs> to kind of been like, yeah, like that's a really important stat. Um, and, you know, coming in and she's, I don't even think if I can't, I can't recall, but I don't even think she's had a blown save. I think every time we've put her in, she's, she's capitalized on that. But like I said, I think it's just really hard for, for teams to adjust from seeing Jalen and Bree to her. I think it's just, especially in, in, in an inning or two, it's just tough for them. So she's, she's been, she's been, been incredible. She's been incredible. Uh, six saves for now, uh, okay. still among the nation's leaders. She's got seven home runs. 
to lead the team and yeah. RBIs at 32. It's pretty remarkable player. She's part of this improved offense that I was hitting 32 points higher than they did last year. Obviously, Brian Levin came in uh, to run the offense. What's it been like working with him? Oh my gosh. He's been, him and I are like two peas in a pod. We think very similarly um, from a hitting standpoint, you know, I've helped with hitters my whole coaching career, um, which has been really cool. And I've always obviously adjusted to the hitting coaches philosophy, um, which has been great, but him and I actually have the same philosophy, which has made it really easy. Um, you know, when he needs, has questions or needs me to like look at a hitter or has questions or whatever it is, I can help out in, in any way, but him and I bounce the ideas off each other. And I've just learned a lot from him, you know, obviously being a head coach formally, um, and, you know, obviously one day I want to be a head coach, which is cool to have two basically in front of me. Um, I can just learn from them constantly, which has been really great. But yeah, him and I, I bounce ideas even pitch from a pitching standpoint. He's an excellent pitch caller. Um, he's he's pitch called his whole career as well. So I think he's kind of like it's kind of nice for him to chill when we when we're on defense. But, um, you know, there's times where I'll ask him like, oh, like I, I'm second guessing myself or you think you see this or you see that or we we read swings and stuff. And, and him and I stand next to each other in the dugout, which is really cool. Um, but I mean, it's been so it's been so fun. Our, our coaching staff's really close, all of us. And um, I think that's been a big a big bright spot as well. I think the kids feed off our energy and our how close we are and how in tune we are. And um, we're always on the same page, which is which is great. Um, and um, but yeah, he's done an excellent job with the hitters. I mean, they have bought in same thing with the pitching staff. They've just come in and bought in. Um, he's brought some some simplified techniques, um, but he gets the hitters ready each week, you know, prepared for the upcoming weekends, you know, probably better than I've, than I've ever seen on a coaching staff, which is really fun. So sounds like you, sounds like you all have versatility there uh, where you can kind of help each other out in other aspects, or it sounds like Brian could help you in pitching. You've helped with some of the offense. Just describe the dynamics of this staff, obviously. And what's it, what but like working for uh, under coach Gillespie? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, we're, we're super versatile. Um, obviously coach Gillespie obviously was a great pitching coach as well. So I've learned a ton from her as well. And there's been times where, you know, she's come in and sat in the bullpen and, and just seeing, you know, kind of what I've, what I've been, what I've been doing. And it's been great. She's given me full reign um, from a pitching standpoint, which is great, but there's been times where I'm like, Hey, can you come look at this? And it's kind of nice to have a second set of eyes that kind of understands. So um, that's been great. And then, yeah, I mean, Brian and I bounce ideas off each other and, um, coach Johnston, our volunteer also, she played here. She's an alum. Um, you know, she was a versatile player, so she can kind of coach anything as well. And, um, yeah, we've kind of just, it, anytime we need a, set, a second set of eyes, we always kind of have one, which is really cool. And a lot of, I know a lot of coaching staffs don't necessarily have that. So I think we're, we're really, we're really lucky. And then, yeah, coaching under Coach Gillespie. I mean, it's been it's been great. She has such a heart of gold. Um, she really cares for people genuinely. Um, she's a great boss. I mean, I, I don't even consider her a boss, honestly. She's more of a friend. But anytime I ever need anything, or I mean, just from a life standpoint, I mean, she's I could call her and I know she'll jump and help me however I can. And it's just been so it's been so refreshing to to come to work every day and not feel like it's work. And, you know, I feel really feel like it's a family here and we're, we're excited to see each other. We're excited, you know, obviously when we, when we have success, but even when we lose, we sit down and try to figure out how we can be better. And it's, it's just, it's just a really cool environment to be a part of. And, um, you know, I'm just, like I said, I'm just really blessed to have her, her leadership and to learn from her and, um, and Brian as well. Like I, I just, I really am just in awe. I, I didn't expect as much, I guess I, I expected obviously Iowa, it's Iowa, but I have just absolutely fallen in love with the place and the people. And it's just been really fun. Let, let's talk about your career. Let's first start about what got you into playing softball. Oh gosh. Well, I wanted to be a gymnast and I was going to be too tall. Okay. So my parents were like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah. So I don't, I don't, my parents just put me into, put me into, to different sports, I think, and just kind of saw what stick 
that's kind of what's that I played three sports growing up all the way into high school um I played club soccer and travel softball and then club water polo as well so I played a lot of different sports um my dad obviously is a basketball coach so basketball is his thing I never played basketball everyone's always shocked about that especially with my height my sister did the whole like music talent she played volleyball my brother played baseball and did track so we kind of all had like our own kind of kind of things that we did but um yeah I guess my parents signed me up when I was like five and kind of never looked back (laughs) never looked back where did your dad coach basketball yeah so my dad played um played at Long Beach State and then he got drafted by the Houston Rockets played uh, in the NBA for a couple years and then he was an agent um, for for a pretty long time. And then he got into more of the training side of it. So he trained a lot of N- um, sorry, NBA players. Um, and then he kind of moved into the high school realm. He really likes that developmental s- side of it. Um, so he coached at this school called J. Sarah um, in California. They're in the Trinity League. Coached there for a long time. And then he kind of made a jump to this school called Fairmont Prep. Um, so he's, he's been there now, I think for like, I don't know, like eight years now. And he took them to like CIF championship and stuff, which is crazy. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, I've come from a long line of coaches. So my grandparents both coach actually here at Iowa, which is really cool. It's kind of why I kind of jumped at the opportunity when coach Gillespie called. Um, but then my dad being a coach and being around that for so long, I think, um kind of drew me into being wanting to be a coach as well which is cool what years did he play with the Rockets he was drafted in 84 the famous 84 draft the one where yeah. Hakeem Olajuwon <laughs> was the number yeah, one pick for the Rockets yeah, he was the yeah. other guy that was drafted by the Rockets <laughs> yeah and- exactly yeah <laughs> so they yeah they played together um which is pretty cool but. That, that's a pretty cool story. That's not too many people could say they play with Akeem Olajuwon and the Rockets there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty good deal there. And you mentioned your grandparents. Uh, and I think that's important. People know that expand on that of then wh- how they involved they were with Iowa. Cause they both, uh, the coached at Iowa. Yeah. So my grandpa, um, his name's also Jody Gardner. That's my dad's name, but, um, he coached under George Raveling, um, here in the eighties. And then my grandma was the tennis coach here in the eighties as well. So they were both here. And then my dad's mentor, um, Sharm Sherman played here and coached here and is in the hall of fame here and his numbers retired. So Sharm has recently passed, but his wife is still here and I get to see her. We go to dinner. We try to go to dinner like once a month. So it's just been really cool to have like that family, those family ties um, here and kind of walk around and like, know that my grandparents walked around and and charm and um it's just a really cool neat experience to kind of be a part of did that hit you when you stepped on campus uh either when you did your interview or fall ball or was there a moment where it just hit you like oh wow i've had you know yeah the, yeah the ties? it was kind of cool because well the first time i saw charm's jersey up in carver was pretty cool i was like wow that's that's pretty special um but then, yeah, I mean, obviously with my grandparents both here, my grandpa coached at West Virginia for a really long time before he came here. Um, and so he was only here for a short time, but it is still pretty cool to think that like he was here and now I'm here. It's just kind of full circle. Um, and then my my dad found some like retro Iowa basketball stuff that he had kept like recently and like sent me pictures. And it, it's just cool to think like, wow, like, I don't know. I wasn't the first gardener, I guess, here on campus. <laughs> That's kind of cool to think about, but. That's pretty wild. Uh, we'll have yeah. to get into that. We'll have to talk about this off the air at some point. That's a, <laughs> We got a lot of basketball stories you got to share there. Uh, but back to your polit- career. So with all, but despite all those ties, you went to Michigan uh, to start. So tuck me through that decision of going to Michigan and playing for Coach Hutch. Yeah. So I was part of that whole early recruiting <laughs> class um, times. I was getting recruited a lot in like seventh and eighth grade. And I almost committed um, to another school in eighth grade. And then they had a coaching change and those coaches ended up getting me in contact basically with, with Hutch and Bonnie. And I went out there to a couple camps and my, my dad's like, Oh, we're going 
when it's cold and it's in the winter, you know, I'd never seen snow. So we'd gone out there and I actually had just come back from, um, from a shoulder surgery. So I was out my freshman year. Um, I had shoulder surgery. So I was out like my freshman and kind of sophomore year, which at that time was the big recruiting age for when I was, when I was getting recruited. So I kind of had kind of been on the back burner. Um, and so I'd gone to a couple of camps and I had like a couple offers and stuff, but the second I went on to Michigan's campus, I just felt like that was home. And I, I loved everything that it kind of offered from a softball standpoint, from an academic standpoint. Um, I was wanting to be a doctor. Um, so I was looking for high academics and they kind of just filled everything that I kind of needed. And then obviously went there for two years and um, it was tough. I, my freshman year, I was told I would, I would never probably pitch again, um, which was really tough. And, but I knew that, you know, Hutch brought me in to, to hit and play first as well. So I thought, okay, like that would be a good, um, you know, that's still good. And then after my sophomore year, I just, I just felt like it would be best for me to go somewhere that looked at me just as a hitting first baseman and not really knew about my pitching background. So um, that's kind of why I kind of made the jump. And Maryland was, was great. I mean, I fell in love with that campus. It's beautiful. I'm, I'm such a busy body. So I love going to do things. And obviously DC is really down the street. And so I would, I would find myself going through the museums and walking around DC a lot. So um, yeah. And then, I mean, I love my time at both schools, but obviously um, I'm an alum of Maryland and we just played them. And that was really fun because I hadn't played them since, since I graduated. So Really? I did not know that, that you have not played Maryland uh, up si since you graduated. Now, no. the other thing is, I want to say, you can correct me if I'm wrong, your freshman year at Michigan, you played UCF uh, in we Orlando. Did. Yes. So we actually played UCF my freshman year, and then we played U at UCF my fifth year at Maryland. So I actually played against oh, Coach that's Cassidy true. and Jess, our director, yes. uh, my fifth year. Yeah. So that's pretty fun. <laughs> That's right, because your senior year, Maryland, yeah, that's right. That was that crazy game, back and forth game. You faced Mackenzie Otis. You you hit her, one of the few teams in the country that hit her that year. Uh, but you lost. I think Maddie Schroeder hit a, a home run, which she's never hit in her career. It was a, one of the craziest <laughs> games ever. Uh, so, wow, that is wild. I Just a uh, good memory by you, first of all. Because uh, you're right. You did, It's kind of unique that you got to see your form, you know, future – coach you would basically work for and now obviously Jessica Yavari you're, you're talking about is now your director of ops at Iowa played on that UCF team that uh won 50 games so that was pretty tremendous there what Marilyn you uh was that when Courtney Dyfel is the head coach yeah so I came in with coach uh Laura Watton um and then coach Dyfel was my coach my fifth year what was that like uh with uh in that last year with coach Dyfel yeah I mean if she's a big reason actually why I'm a pitching coach today. Um, and I have told her this, so she does know, but she, so I had three surgeries in college. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, two on my shoulder and one on my hip. And ultimately my hip was the big issue of me not pitching anymore. And my fifth year after my hip surgery, my doctor was like, Hey, you might be able to give pitching like a shot again. And I was like, I haven't pitched for five years. Like this is going to be really interesting, but you know, I'm just so thankful that she came in. I mean, she's unbelievable, right. As, as a pitching coach. And, and so I was like, yeah, I can try to pitch again. And, you know, I came back not throwing like I used to, you know, you don't throw as hard when you take five years off. Um, so we kind of like revamped me as a, as a pitcher. We, I came like a spinny, change up pitcher, which I never had been. And, and, you know, a, a big piece of that was because of her. I mean, she was so patient with me in the bullpen and we tried different grips, different pitches, different spins that I had never done. Um, and we just kind of like worked it out every day in the fall. And, um, you know, ultimately my hip started acting up again. And I think I only pitched like a handful of innings, but it was still cool to be out there for a handful of innings. But I think having that time in the bullpen with her has really set me up to be a pitching coach, to have those tools that I might not have if I didn't get hurt. And if I never obviously got the chance to pitch again, because I just was a power pitcher that threw hard and had a decent changeup. Um, and then being a spinny pitcher and trying different grips and different things, like I had mentioned, 
I think set me up now to have a lot of success as a pitching coach. And, um, you know, I, it's, it's just cool too. I can call her at any point And if I have a question on anything, pitching life, anything, I know she's, she'll answer and, and help me as best as she can, which, which is just really cool to have someone in your corner like that. And you said she kind of was the reason you got into coaching. Take me through that process as you got into coaching, then you go out West, you go to Grand Canyon and then San Diego. Yeah. So I, I did not want to be a coach, uh, which is like breaks my dad's heart. I'm sure. Um, like I said, I was ready to be a doctor and then I worked the special Olympics one year and I fell in love with that. I thought that was going to kind of be my calling. And, um, yeah, I, I decided to, to dabble in being a graduate assistant. Um, my grandma was an athletic director at Grand Canyon, um, and actually was on the hiring committee for Ann Pearson, who was the head coach there at the time. And, um, uh, my grandma kind of put some feelers out for me to be a graduate assistant there and it kind of just worked out. And so, yeah, I went there to be a GA and was there for three years as a, as a GA, um, just cause my student teaching, I got my master's in special education and, um, yeah, I didn't really want to coach, just didn't want to be away from the game yet and kind of give back to the next generation. And then Anne called me at the end of my graduate assistant ship, I guess. Um, and I had a couple job offers from a special education standpoint that I was looking at and she called me and was just kind of like, Hey, you want to like give coaching, you know, a shot. And it was that like moment in time where you're like, okay, there's two roads I can go down. It's going to change your life, whichever way you go. And, you know, I kind of just thought like my degrees will always be there. Um, coaching, coaching is tough to get back into, you know, once, once you're gone. And I had heard that, um, from a lot of different people, if, if that's something that interests you, you might as well do it now and build a resume and do it while you're young. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. You know, I've never really been able to coach because as a GA, you kind of just kind of help out where you're, you're needed. And, um, so I thought, you know, that would be pretty cool. And then she was like, yeah, I want you to be in charge of the pitchers. And I was like, I was not expecting that, but okay, uh, let's do it. You know? And, and so, I think I was like, you know what, I can do this. And I, you know, called Courtney and I called different people and they're like, you can do this. You're fine. Like if you need help, you know, we got you. And it was just really cool. And then you kind of just start developing your own sense of coaching style, you know, within it. And it kind of just took off and um, yeah, I was there for a couple more years. Um, and, you know, I, I love Anne with my entire heart. And, you know, if she was still there, I probably would still be there. Honestly. I mean, I was not looking at all to leave. I love Green Canyon and I loved having her as a boss. She was an unbelievable person, unbelievable boss and, um, learned a lot from her. I was, I'm really lucky. That was my first head coach, um, you know, boss. Cause I mean, I don't, I don't have one bad thing to say about her. And like I said, the the things that I learned, the boundaries that she set for me, I, it's hard for young coaches to sometimes transition into um, being an assistant coach and kind of separating that friend and coaching role. And she, I mean, really did a great job with setting those boundaries so that I didn't have to like necessarily like worry about those, which looking back, I'm so lucky. I didn't even realize it was happening in the moment, but now looking back, I'm like, wow, that's really, really special. So I'm forever thankful for that. Um, and then, yeah, then went to UC San Diego, um, you know, for a year and it was so nice being closer to home. My parents were just like an hour North. Um, so they'd come to all our games and stuff, which was cool. Um, and then was happy, wasn't looking to leave really liked it down there. And then when coach Gillespie called me in August, it was kind of like, this one's tough, you know, family ties, big 10. This one's a tough one to maybe say, eh. So, I mean, I, I had gotten some other phone calls throughout the summer and I kind of was like, I'm good. I'm happy. People have always told me if you're happy somewhere, don't, you know, don't look elsewhere. But, um, when coach Gillespie called, it was just a little bit different with the family ties. And like I said, the big 10 ties and, there's just a lot more that I was like, Ooh, this could be a really good opportunity. Um, you know, for me. So. Seem a little bit like destiny a little bit, right? Like a bit of destiny. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty crazy how everything is kind of played out. You know, we found a house, my husband and I found a house within a week of me accepting. Um, we moved out here like two weeks after me accepting, he got hired on with baseball. He's the director of player development um, I mean, everything worked out so smoothly. I, I feel like it was definitely meant to be, which is really cool. 
How are you different now as a coach than you were when you were a player? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, well, one, I get so nervous as a coach. It's so weird. Uh, as a player, I like never really got nervous or got butterflies. Like as a coach, like I get fluttery butterflies in my stomach all the time. And I'm like, what is this? Like, I don't, I don't it's know. Interesting. I, like, it's just that's weird. Interesting. Yeah. I think it's cause I can't, obviously I can only do so much. Um, and there's, it's gotten better over the years, hundred percent. I think, you know, as a young coach, you're like, oh, I hope I'm doing this right. Or I hope, you know, and I've kind of learned, you know, trust your gut and whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And, you know, don't second guess yourself. And I think for me, that's been a, a big learning curve from, from when I first started coaching to now, but as a player, I mean, I think I'm pretty similar from a relationship standpoint. I always had a lot, you know, really good relationships with my teammates. Um, I was always pretty, you know, positive. I was probably one of the more positive ones and uplifting. So I feel like I'm kind of similar in that aspect, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'm a competitor. I hate to lose. I look back and always, you know, I did this as a player and I do this as a coach. I look back if we have a tough game or if we lose, it's like, what could I have done better? You know, personally, what could I have done better? And, you know, I, I take ownership a lot on things. If a kid gets a hit on a call a pitch that I called, you know, and it's, you know, I'll take ownership on that, you know, every time. Cause sometimes I didn't set them up correctly. Um, you know, and I think I did a pretty good job at taking ownership as a player as well. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I still have so much energy. <laughs> I cheer super loud, um, <laughs> still. Um, and it's just fun. I think, I think that's, I had so much fun playing and I have so much fun coaching. I think, you know, it's it, at the end of the day, it is a game and I know it's my job and it's work, but you know, it doesn't have to be like that. It can be fun. And I feel like when I have fun and, and bring some energy, it kind of rubs off on the kids as well. And I'm obviously in the dugout when um, we're on offense. Um, I make some appearances at first base coaching and that's, sometimes fun sometimes I need some break from pitch calling <laughs> but um yeah I mean I think it's just I don't know I, I I don't know if there's much differences besides the fact that I get more nervous now as a coach than I did as a player yeah, I've not I've not heard that usually it's been the other way around where they were like yeah that's interesting <laughs> there what do you think going through the injuries that you did has helped you relate to the players as a coach and knowing uh, each yeah. situation and knowing the ad adversity situations that any player could have you've probably gone through it yeah, I definitely think it has. Um, you know, I've had some really unfortunate injuries, uh, some pretty gruesome dislocations and stuff that's pretty nasty. But um, yeah, from, you know, it's tough. Injuries are tough. And even today, I mean, I, I unfortunately am in pain <laughs> like every day um, still from some of my surgeries. And it's just, you know, something you kind of have to deal with, unfortunately. But yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing that I think people that haven't been hurt um, and good for them, those that haven't been hurt, I think the biggest thing that they don't realize is how much it does take a toll on you mentally. Um, you know, no one wants to be in pain, obviously, but a lot changes when you're in pain. You know, you're maybe a little bit more grumpy or you don't sleep as well. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it that I think people don't realize. And um, I do think that I can relate to them because of that. And understanding that, you know, life sucks sometimes and it's unfair, but at the same time, there's a lot of positives to still look, look, you know, at it. And if I never got injured, I probably wouldn't be coaching. Um, you know, if I didn't get injured, I wouldn't have that fifth year with Courtney. I mean, there's just a lot to look back. And I think every, you know, I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason. So, um, you know, I, I'm, it sucks. And, you know, sometimes you just got to cry it out and, and that's okay. But looking at the positives and, you know, understanding that you have a coaching staff that loves you and that's there for you and wants to, you know, the best for you. And I think that's a big piece um, that the kids need when, especially when they're injured or going through something. Absolutely. No, well said. Uh, and it's been showing on the field, been having a good season. Like I said, big wins this year. You've got wins over a central Arkansas team, which now all of a sudden everybody knows how good they are all of a sudden after they've beaten Arkansas twice, you beat them at third place. 
in a great game in extra innings. You've beaten Maryland. You just recently beat Nebraska. You've beaten Mississippi State. You've beaten Northwestern. A lot of games to go, but there's a lot to play for moving forward to this team. And then obviously the Big Ten tournament in Champaign. What's going to be the keys for this team moving forward to continue this momentum and success that you're having? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is every game that we've been in this year has been a competitive game. Um, you know, we have been in every single game and that's from a pitching, you know, standpoint, I always tell our pitchers, just give us a chance to win. You give us a chance to win. That's, that's all you can do. And I think they've done an outstanding job at that. Um, you know, the amount of one run or two run losses we've had, of it's been a lot. And, um, you know, we're still really young. And so I think that's a big piece is just getting, you know, those timely hits right now. Um, and as, as our younger kids kind of age and get a little bit more, um, seasoned, I think those hits will start kind of falling. And, and recently they have been, um, I think at the beginning of the year, we were missing, there was a couple games. We, if we had one hit, one more hit, you know, in a big, sure. big situation, we would have had a couple more W's, but I think they're starting to kind of learn and get a little bit more seasoned and understand like, you know, just different softball IQ standpoints. And I think they're just growing every day, which is cool. But, um, yeah, I think for us, it's just the pitching staff continuing to, to, you know, let us be in games and giving us a chance to win and, and just trusting that whoever's up to bat can, can do it for us. So yeah, we have some really big series is coming up. Um, yeah, we still have a shot at, at making NCAAs, which is, which is outstanding. Um, especially if you look at obviously from last year to this year, I think that's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just really cool. And the kids are seeing it and they're, they're getting confident and they're seeing that there's something, you know, there. And I think that's, they don't feel I don't feel that they feel pressured from it I think they're excited about it which I think is is where where we want to be um but yeah I mean the difference is in even just playing like Maryland's and Northwestern's you know last year there weren't very competitive games and they you know struggled against those teams and this year like I mean we really should have had to from Northwestern um you know we had a chance to sweep Nebraska you know we're right there in those games and it's man we're so close at getting those games, which are, which are huge. So I think they're getting confidence, even though we're maybe on the flip side and getting some L's from it, but they're still building confidence in that, which is, which is really cool. And I think down the stretch here, we're playing really well right now. I think they understand that as well. So I think, I think we're a force to be reckoned with. Honestly, I think people aren't going to want to play us the next few weeks, um, which is, which is cool to be feared, but we also like being the underdog. Well, so. and, you're, and you mentioned you're young. You're still mm-hmm. a young roster, which it that's growing by it each day. Yeah, no, we're we're so young. Um, I mean, I honestly lose track. Sometimes I forget how many freshmen we have on our field, and most of our freshmen don't play like freshmen. They don't have the softball IQ of a normal freshman. They're like advanced. I mean, it's just it's just really cool to see them just go out and play and play free. And when they make a mistake, they're like. They get kind of down, but then, you know, the upperclassmen bring them up, which is such a good balance. Um, it's It's been such a good balance with the upperclassmen and the underclassmen and just our, you know, our bench players that come off the bench and make an impact. And I mean, I think it's just, it's just been really special. It's a really special team. Um, and it's just cool to have the freshmen get experience now for the years to come, because we're only going to get better. And I think that's, I think we're going to be a team even next year and in the following years, we're probably, you know, I think we're going to make a big splash in the next few years. I mean, we're already making a splash now, but I think yeah. growing and seeing who we have coming in, I think it's going to be even bigger. Well, you're on track. You're going to be in, in the big 10 tournament. This team wasn't in the big 10 tournament last year. So lots mm-hmm. of improvements. I also have to mention they did you beat South Florida. I got to mention that because I know that one means a lot to coach Gillespie, mm-hmm. <laughs> whether she wants to doubt player now and you beat them in Tampa in a wild game where you came from behind uh, and my co-host was the broadcaster filling in on that. Yeah. So I have to mention that too. Yeah, that was a, it was a fun game. Um, we had a rain delay, yeah. um, which we are not familiar, super familiar with. And we hadn't been <laughs> super familiar with, but man, they got their tarp on so fast. We were like all in amazement and we're like, boy, we forgot they're in Florida. They get rain a lot. Um, but yeah, the rain delay. And then we came back, man, like hair on fire, just ready to go at them. And I do not think they were ready for that. Um, and we were just really proud because we hadn't been in a delay. So we were like, uh, how are they going to, how are they going to do? And it's tough from a pitching standpoint to come back and sure. come back in and 
and um, pitch after rain delay. But, you know, our pitching staff did great. Our hitters came out, like I said, and just knocked the ball around the park, which was cool to see. Um, and, you know, we see, we have glimpses of that where it's like, holy cow, like, and, and obviously no team's going to like perform at their best all the time, but, you know, there's glimpses of when we're performing at our best. I mean, it's, we could really beat anybody, which is really fun. No question. And uh, look forward to seeing how the season plays out. A lot of big games still ahead for Iowa and uh, uh, coach. I know it's a busy time, but uh, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us and your candor uh, and talking about your career. I've been fascinated to get to talk to you about it uh, since I got to see a little bit of it uh, in person. And obviously you're doing a great job with the uh, pitching staff and you're all, all of you as a staff doing a great job this year. Good luck the rest of the way. It's a blast to talk to you and uh, we'll definitely try to do this again down the road. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I, I really appreciate it.